All right, Connor. How's it going? It's very nice to meet you. Likewise. And I'd like to start by asking uh, if you were aware and how much you were aware when you were guests as a strip tucker in Enterprise of what entailed to be in a Star Trek series. How much that, of that surprised you? All of it. All of it. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think when you first was guest? Um, well, I was very excited to be on a show, and then pretty pretty quickly, I realized um, the size of uh, what I was getting involved with. And it, it really wasn't until my first convention that I, I got an understanding of, of the fan side of it. You're kind of um, contained when you're shooting a show. You're so busy that you don't really get an idea of of, of what, of the scope, maybe around the world or even in the... What really struck me was that before we even aired the, the show, we were on the cover of Entertainment Weekly, and at that point I was kind of like, huh, maybe this is a big deal. Um, but I had no real idea um, prior to that. And you know what, I'm glad, because if I had had any expectation, or the expectation I would have had had I known, it would have been intimidating, but because I was relatively ignorant of, you know, this whole world that we're talking about right now. Um, it, it freed me up to, uh, to sort of do my, my best work. And it's it's, it's nerve-wracking enough to walk onto a new show and to not think you're going to get fired. Um, but um, sometimes ignorance is bliss. <laughs> I see. Well, and, and you went through a shock during the first season of Enterprise because you were shooting the first episodes and then before you premiered, uh, it, it happened that horrific attack in, in New York, uh, oh, 9-11. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, at that point, you were doing a show about optimism and the future and the whole world like, changed the mood 180 degrees. How was that to be on that set doing that work while the work was, was changing in a, an instant? Uh, everything changed. Um, I'll tell you, when I was doing the show, and it's, it's a good question because, you know, I thought I'd gotten this, I had gotten this amazing opportunity. And uh, when 9-11 happened, I found myself really struggling with the idea that what I was doing had really any value or had any importance. And I thought that I was now just doing some silly TV show and, and, and I think a lot of us felt this way that we need to be doing something else, something better. Um, and uh, I had a conversation with my father about this and I shared this with him. He said, actually, I disagree with you. I think that what you're doing right now is, is as important as it ever has been because, um, you know, one, the franchise that you're working with and for has a message that's different than what's happening right now. And um, at the very least, what you're doing is giving people an hour respite a week to not think about what's happening. And um, that helped a lot. The other thing that people have to realize is that 9-11 changed our show completely. I think to, to, I think to watch our show without really associating 9-11 with it, you're missing something. Because, yeah, before that it was, the first few episodes were, I think, along the track that they had thought of. And then 9-11 radically changed everybody. But it also radically changed, I think, the concept of our show. Yeah, and that came about in the third season, right? And, and your character in particular uh, made that that whole uh, point of view change that the world did in 2001. Your character went through the third season when you, you lost your sister and so on. How did it feel to address that so, so you know, so closely to, to, to the Well, event? I felt I, I, I took, um, I felt a lot of responsibility for that. Because, I mean, it was clear that that's, I was, I was being used as a catalyst <clears throat> to, to express the, the, the feelings and emotions and intentions of the people writing our show, sort of filtered through me. 
And so I, I took a great deal of responsibility and, um, and, and great deal of care in, in how that was done. I see. And, and my, my last question will have to do with the last episode of uh, Enterprise because you're killed. Uh, it's the end of the show. I'm killed? Yeah. <laughs> Every time I'm in a convention. Every time. When this comes up and it says that I hear this, sometimes it's loud, sometimes it's quiet. But somebody goes, what? <laughs> no. It's and a spoiler. <laughs> yeah. And I'm always thinking, don't you have the internet? <laughs> but anyways, um, and at that point, it looked like the end of it. So you were comfortable with it. You were welcoming of it because I've seen interviews of you saying, "No, I'm okay with that. It, it puts an, a, an end to the, the character, yeah. and so on and so forth." But now Star Trek is coming back. How do you feel? How do you feel to be dead? <laughs> well, nobody really dies in science fiction. You should know that. Okay, so, so you're hopeful you can come back. Oh yeah. I mean, look, they already cloned me one time. It didn't work as well as it could have, but. Yeah, if, if they wanted to bring Trip Tucker back into the universe, it would not be a very... What it should be is, I don't know if you guys remember Dallas, where there was a character, Bobby, who wakes up, he's in the shower, and they could do it a thousand different ways. Uh, would I do it? Yeah, we'll talk. <laughs> yeah, I'd do it. Well, okay, and, and to, to wrap it up, I'd just uh, like to to ask you how do you feel about the message of Star Trek, especially nowadays. We have a, a very large anti-science anti movement, we have a, a very divisive uh, political landscape. How do you feel about the, the message of Star Trek nowadays? Well, I think that the message of Star Trek The pendulum swings back and forth throughout our lives. And at this point in time, we are, we are at a point where the pendulum has swung to a place where they're not listening to the, to the words and language that maybe Gene Roddenberry had intended for us as, as human beings and for humanity to express the best of us. That will change again. Um, so my feeling on that is, Sometimes the words, they don't get lost, they don't get forgotten, they don't get paid attention to. But words aren't for free. And we're at a period of time when the things that are being said and the things that are being done um, are of an extreme nature that, and it's my hope, that the pendulum has gone to its height and will, and will begin to come back to the message of Star Trek and the message of, um, not the message, the truth of science. And um, that's, my, that's my belief and my hope that, that don't get too nervous or don't get too worried. Be worried for the things that happen in the moment, but recognize that life does this back and forth. And, and we're, at the, we're at a very, depending on how you believe, We're at a very uncomfortable place, but it'll come back. It has to, because there's too many people who care about the other, other direction, the other message, and the other language, like everybody who's involved in, uh, in the Star Trek universe. So we'll be all right. Okay, thank you, Tom. It's been a pleasure. Likewise.